Um, before we jump into the movie today, we just want to remind you to please subscribe wherever you get your, your wherever you get your podcast, uh, and make sure you turn off those notifications so you are always reminded and notified of when a new episode comes out. To join the conversation, follow us on social at Real Chums. And if at the end of the end episode you enjoyed it, we'd love it if you left a review. It does help us get discovered. Let's talk. Well, do you have a question? Of all American cars, the, oh, okay. that like our American cars, which is your favorite American muscle car? This might be a cop out, but as a as a young lad, I saw the movie uh, Gone in sixty seconds. Classic, okay, with Nick Cage, and something about the Shelby GT five hundred, the nineteen sixty nine Shelby GT five hundred, in that silver color. And how it drives and the relationship that Nick has with it. I it spoke to me as an eleven year old. <laughs> and I have always wanted ever since a nineteen sixty nine Shelby G T five hundred. Like I when I play um I play, speed or I, whatever. Yeah, Forza is what I'm playing lately. Yeah. Like I once I have enough money, I go out and buy a Shelby G T five hundred. Because I just love I just love the look of it, the 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 curves on the side, on the top. If someone is jumping into this conversation randomly at this very moment, they're gonna be like, "What is this? Is this rated MA?" <laughs> but I just <laughs> I love the Shelby GT, that that Shelby Mustang. Okay, it's beautiful. Um, I also uh, would say Mustang. I actually fun story. I was in, I was a senior in high school. And, um, I was trying to, so my car, my, I had a Jeep Grand Cherokee, um, the check engine light comes on. I do what every good lad who has a good dad tells you to do, go check, you know, pop in the sensor <laughs> thing, get the code or whatever. And, you know, fi- figure out that it's just like this little sensor that you have to like literally replace somehow in me, what I didn't know, or I guess was never really instructed on is that I had to unplug the, a battery, the, my car battery, before switching the sensor. Hmm. And I messed up my sensor. Literally, I would drive and it would, my, my Jeep would just like shut off. Okay. While I was driving. So I asked a neighbor, because at the time my dad wasn't uh, um, around at the time. And he, and so I had gone to a neighbor to ask for some help. And so we took it to a, uh, a shop. We were trying to figure things out and I needed a car. And he's like, look, um, I know you're going through some stuff. Um, I have a Shelby. Actually, I have a Mustang 69. Wait, you've told me this story. That's right. Go on. He, he's like, I have a Mustang 69 that uh, is just sitting around and needs to be driven. Why don't you borrow it for a little bit? Get out of town. Bro. <laughs> no. It wasn't a Shelby right. GT500, but it was a Shelby GT. Uh, it was a Shelby a 69 Mustang. Dang. Um, it didn't have the full kit, um, but bro, it was a boat. Yeah. It was a yeah. freaking boat. I bet. Let me just tell you, it was one of the most fun cars to drive. Super big gas guzzler. Um, it like, you know, <laughs> the whole kick of little. And so for me, like that, I think because I drove one, I mean, I, yeah, as yeah. a kid, you know, you played need, I need, play need for speed um, for an entire summer with a homie of mine. So like getting in the, you know, the, the American car and the imports and like, mm-hmm. you know, doing what you, you know, souping them up, but driving a Mustang, an old school Mustang, bro, it is. That's cool. It's beautiful. That's awesome. It I, was awesome. I had it for like a month and a half. Really? Dude, it was killer. I'm jealous. I'm not going to lie. I'm it was, jealous. It was pretty sweet. To this day, I tell my wife, like, one day, she's like, yeah, when you hit, like, your, uh, <laughs> whatchamacallit, when every man goes through their uh, uh, midlife crisis, yeah. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, if you come home with a with a Mustang during a midlife crisis, she's like, where, where are we going to put the kids? I'm like, well, <laughs> hopefully by then the kids are out. <laughs> On a side note, my, uh, like, dream car that I would, like, pick up mm-hmm. Is the Mazda RX-7. Oh, okay, okay. The rotary engine was such a cool concept. Yeah. Anyways, good stuff. Um, I I rewatched Gone in 60 Seconds maybe like two, two and a half years ago. 
And I was like, well, this movie is bonkers. I love it though. And it's just it's wild. It, it's the it's the Nick Cage though just brings it. Dude, okay, okay, so whole another tangent. We're going on a tangent. Who cares? Uh do you think that if God in 60 Second had come out uh like in the franchise boom, that they would have made a franchise? Oh yeah. Right? Well, like, well, I'm the even cast surprised. Alone, yeah, it's a stacked cast. So and, stacked. And what's his face? Uh, the brother who who let me look him up. Um, Giovanni Ribisi, right? Like he's had an incredible career now. Um, so like, you know, it's this is a stacked cast, and yeah. like, I, I'm still surprised because this was this came out in 2004, maybe 2000. No. 2000 when did when did uh when did fast and the furious come out uh also 2000 right the first one 2001 a year later That's, but, but the thing is is that like they so the fast you know uh fast and furious came out and then two fast and furious came out in 2003 maybe it's because they had a younger cast like i mean paul walker Okay, yeah, sure. Like it was it, it appealed to Gone, like Gone younger. 60, yeah, Gone in Sixty Seconds was rated R. No, it wasn't. A what? No, it's PG thirteen. I swear at one point it was rated R. I wasn't allowed to watch it. I had to sneakily watch it. I I mean there's the one like sex scene. Yeah, I know. But like But but it was scene, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Because for the same reason, finally, when I was older, my my parents were, or my my dad would like fast forward that scene, and then finally, when I was older, I'm like, this is what we were fast forwarding. <laughs> I mean, Angelina Jolie was a sex icon. Come on, look, the the budget on it was ninety million, and it made opening weekend gross worldwide was two hundred thirty seven million for Gun in Six Seconds. Yeah, they they should. I don't, know, I don't know how they. It's. I wonder if it's because, like, how do you. I mean, essentially, it's the same premise for the Fast and Furious, like the like the like ish. It, well, no, not the uh, same premise, like the that con, like the overall like, you know, like Dom and uh, and Paul Walker's character, uh, they have the like moment at the end of the like drag race with yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. the police car, and he's like, I owe you, you know, yeah, a sixty second car, or whatever, and so he leaves off, right? Like the idea of like. There's this time. Anyways, I don't know. The, I, I will the, say like this. The getaway. Sure. Right. But now that you mention it, I appreciate the restraint to not do another one. Because what what do you do? The premise of Gone in 60 Seconds is, right, like his uh, a, a, a car thief is brought back into the game because his brother yeah. made a bad mad right. deal with some gangster. Right. Right. And he has to steal how many? 50 cars in, in one night, right? One night. How do you like what what's, what do you what's the, what's, next what's the next premise, right? Right, right? And that's the problem with God, with the Fast and the Furious that they just keep spinning gold out of their butt. Like I just I don't even know what they're spinning out of their butts. Like it's crap. Like so so I appreciate the restraint. Well, okay, look. Up until recently <laughs> they were not they were not that crap, okay? I love the Somehow we pull Fast and the Furious into every episode, even well, though well, I've only well, seen the first one. I'm, I'm now convinced that we're ne- I'm never going to get you to watch the Fast and Furious. No, I, I think I said it last year in one episode. In our once we get a subscription going. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. If we do, uh, I can't remember what the number was. Off the look, we'll have to find yeah, it. We'll find it. In any case, all right, let's uh, let's hop into Greece now. Like, let's just give you a little bit of a premise for Greece. Um, when we were trying to come up with an episode, so. Um, we are going to be going starting next month. We are going to be focusing on a specific theme next month. We are going to be sp- focusing specifically on like romance movies, mm-hmm. rom-coms, romance, love movies, you know, like, you know, the, the whole kind of spectrum because there's no better, uh, film analyzers than two guys in their thirties to talk about <laughs> romance. <laughs> Hey, we're happily married, bro. We are. we are happily married, so you know. We're, we're, I think we have great advice. Tune in because this is going to be a month long of two dudes just talking uh, about romance movies. So good. Um, we may have a special guest. I have to talk to you about this later after mm-hmm. the pod. In any case, let's. Uh, we so because of that, this we this is like the last one before we get into the season of what those themed months are. And so we were trying to set if we were going to do another movie with uh, like another movie that shaped us. And Marcel had this great idea of like, let's do movies that like we don't fully understand the band, like the hype for. Yeah. 
and Greece was the one that we we landed on uh, because Marcel doesn't understand the hype of Greece. Now, do do you do you do you do you? I I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I did, and I'm going to tell you right now. I don't think I do. Okay, all right. Let's let's dig into this. Okay, um, for those of you that aren't aware of Greece, right? Greece uh, takes place. In 1958, I think it is, uh, this good girl, Sandy, and this greaser, Danny, fall in love during the summer. Uh, she says she's moving back to Australia. He goes back to his everyday life in California. But then they discover that they're in the same high school. And hilarity ensues. I don't know if hilarity yeah. do. Hilarity, probably not. Okay, so this was the actual question of the day that I had. I was like, what is this movie really about? <clears throat> you know, we are going to try to address this <laughs> throughout this whole episode. I I don't know. Because here's... Here, let's, let's put some perspective to this, okay? So, uh, this movie was made in 1978, as we've, we've yeah. stated. This is depicting 20 years prior to this making mm-hmm. if we were going to do a movie now it would have to be based in 2004 okay the um in but, like the and, same and, and keep in mind the, the 1978 the movie the broadway show came out in 1971 yeah, yeah. So, so almost like 12 years after 1958 ish right but yeah go on so so the the breakdown like it you know it was a broadway show there they wanted to move it to move to to uh uh, into film mm-hmm. to maybe immortalize. I don't. Is the is the Broadway show different than this movie? That's what I want to know. There, like the Broadway show takes place in Chicago. Ah, okay. For example, instead of L.A. Instead of L.A. Um, they there's there's a couple like the the song uh, "Hopelessly Devoted." That's new to the movie. Okay. Um, and I think they took out two songs from the play. Um, and then they added hopelessly romant, hopelessly devoted, because mm. um, Olivia Newton John's contract said like she needs to have a solo, and so they're like, all right, so they wrote it and filmed it after they had finished production. Um, Grease Lightning, okay, that's actually that's in the Broadway that's sung by Kaniki, mm-hmm. and in the movie it was done by uh, Danny. Because John Travolta made a scene and he's like, no, like if I'm going to be in this movie, I want to. I should be the one. Singing. I should be singing Grease Lightning. Oh, okay. So th- this, let's, <laughs> we have so much. To we work. have so much. To okay. I, I want to understand, like, what has been your relationship with this movie? This, that's a great. So I've always really, actually up until this watching. Yeah. I've always kind of enjoyed this movie. How many times have you seen it? I would say more than 10 times, probably okay. a dozen times. Oh, okay. Like I've seen it quite yeah. a few times. Yeah. Um, do I ever like, have I fully like, like, is every watch like one that I like, I cherish? No, but I like, it was, it was on quite a bit. I've always like jammed out to the music, uh, to like, you know, Grease Lightning and to, uh, what's the electrifying the, uh, what's the last one? What's the last number called? Um, you're the one that I want. You're, You're the one that I want. Of course. Uh, of course, right? Like I feel like every I've, high every I, high school every high school dance in the, the 2000s had that had that probably like, since probably since 1978 <laughs> that song has been playing in high school. So, I, I've karaoke to it. Yeah. So so there. But uh and so overall like it was always like a good time. I mean, Grease productions happened in high schools all across America. Yeah, yeah. Um and it was always a fun time. The, the this time period wasn't is such an interesting time. Um, I think part of it's because uh, two things that happen. I think with the, with this time period, um, you've got uh, both men and women have ve- they're very dialed in on style mm-hmm. and dancing and like being together and like enjoying like wanting to connect like physically and dance and physically. I guess in this movie it portrays <laughs> <laughs> um, is it like kind of a big perspective. Like yeah. they're, they're, people are maybe pushing back on a, another level of pushing back on the status quo of uh what parents think is kosher or whatever you want to w- sure w- or go from there so yeah that's part of my relationship okay also i mean like some of the band pieces like the musical musicality pieces really great yeah i was I'm a, we talked about this i'm a band kid 
And so uh, that was always like fun to listen to and enjoy to and jam out to music. Yeah. So I probably don't really have a relationship with the movie. I just have a relationship with the music on at the end of the day. Okay. I I would feel the same. I would say the same thing. Yeah. So I didn't watch this until I was like in my twenties. Oh, what? Yeah. So what? I were I, you living under a rock? <laughs> no, listen. I knew the songs. Of okay? course. I it, like you said, it was always playing on TV. So like every now and then, like it would yeah. be playing, and so like I would catch it like halfway. Yeah. Uh, or I would catch the end or just the beginning, right? So like I knew the story. Uh, you it, knew the music. Well, I knew the music, but I also knew like, oh, okay. okay. I knew that there was okay. these oh, yeah, yeah. Danny and Sandy met and yeah, yeah. she was supposed to go one way and they met up in high school and then like he tries to be the cool kid and like not be interested, whatever. Like I, I and then at the end they end up together. I knew that much. Yeah. I saw it for the first time when I was like probably like 23. Okay. And after I finished, I was like, what was that? <laughs> what is this movie about? What is this movie about? And, 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 I, and I was just like, is this is this supposed to be like a satire? Is this a parody of what of what in nineteen set in the nineteen seventies what they looked back at at the fifties? Granted, and again, this movie came out in seventy one, so like we are coming out of the Vietnam era. People are, are are romanticizing about. They might be romanticizing about that time, about the past, and yeah. thinking things were a lot easier. But like, let's add some parody, and and I and and I had all these questions about it. In the very end, just like I remember, and I saw this like with my wife. We were dating at the time, and I was like, I don't want my kids to watch this. Like, what does this teach? I, what does this teach women? That one, if a guy is a guy, can treat you horrible, can be a douche, a jerk gaslight you you should still try to go after him and if all of that doesn't work then change entirely everything about yourself <laughs> so that then he can like you that's what this movie is saying is that what it's saying or is it that like listen men rule the world and we can say what like that you know like uh that you can be an idiot or you can try to be smart but hide it because you don't want your friends to think that you're an idiot. It, 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 there's so there's many, just so much to like this, <laughs> like so so much that's wrong <laughs> with behaviors. And sometimes I even ask myself, I'm like, is this really like how the '50s were? Right? Like, it, it, it's interesting. But like, I think that that was my first interaction. I will say this, and I and I should have probably like prefaced this episode with, I love the music. Even watching it this time, it's it's great. Um, John Travolta steals the show. Like he is great. The the songs are phenomenal. To the point that we can like still jam to them. Like th they're still bangers. Like they are. They are. <laughs> but but like the story outside of the musicals, I'm just like, what? This is why I'm like <laughs> I'm almost like I don't know if it's because it got if like this movie got lost in translation from the Broadway to the to to on screen. Like was it because when you're on when you're in a play you have to exaggerate things so that it seems natural sure. yeah, as yeah. you play the character yeah. right you're projecting to a live audience there's you know you have to have you got to be be able to uh project your voice even if you have microphones you know like there's still lots that have to happen mm -hmm. um in that setting watching it this round i was like I was very aggressively, and uh, granted, I'm going to say, like, I, it's probably been, like, a good 16 years since I've, like, I watched it a ton in the high school, yeah. comparing into the early 20s, but, and then college and life happened, and, and yeah. whatnot, so I didn't, haven't watched it the, a ton since. And this was my second time watching it. This was your second time Yeah, I saw it that one time 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, this is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll stick to the music. And, and, but you're 100% right. Like, at the end of the day, like, <laughs> what is this trying to say? And maybe, and maybe I don't think, I don't think, I think it's it's a moment in time, right? I don't yes. think, it, like, it has to have... Uh, and, and again, like, I, I, I should have studied a little bit more on, like, I think this is meant to be a bit of a parody on on 1950s movies is it a parody or is it just that like let's let's uh an over exaggeration of high school of like of 20 years uh, prior of 20 years prior high school yeah and let's write it to an audience that may be in high school 
they like or or an audience that like wishes they were back in high school right the fact that the fact that like half of the cat more than half the cast is in their 30s right yes and, and what's his face um looks like he's in his 40s <laughs> what's yeah. his name uh where is he i know what's it? uh Sunny. Sunny looks like <laughs> Sunny looks like he has three kids in high school, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, and he's such a tree. Fr- Frenchy. Uh, I'm like, what is ha- like the the other thing that I'm like this is one of those movies. Um, you know, who, a movie that does it uh, does a really great job at like commentating on like the like decade. The Totally Killer movie. Did you watch that movie yet? I haven't seen it yet, no. Oh, bro, you need to watch that movie. <laughs> when we do Halloween. When it's on our Halloween. Okay, we'll do it on our Halloween. So, uh, Totally Killer ha- goes back to the future, or goes back into the past, and she goes to the 60s, and she walks into a school, and she's like, hey, I need to get in. They're like, okay, here, fill out this thing. And the same thing happens in this movie. She's like, oh, I'm new to it. And like, her parents aren't there. Where are the parents also, also in this entire movie? <laughs> yeah, where are they? The, like the diner women are like the people who like are like commenting uh-huh. like, on TV. I'm like, what's happening here? It's because they're all in the 30s. It's right. in high school. Right, right, exactly. Um, uh, but but going back to like the the setting, like it's 1978. So 70, what was it? 75 was when Happy Days was kind of like the biggest hit. Yeah. Right. Fonzie, the Fonz was the biggest Hollywood star in the world. Yeah. Right. And then 78. So then. 19 when when did um back to the future come out 1985 84 yeah. so within like another five years you were you were going to have another call back to the 50s so i think like we're we're in this like era of like nostalgia, nostalgia. Yeah. for the 50s yeah um and i just i think it, it it was a perfect time for this movie to have come out i think part of it is that like the 50s were stylized like i said like it they like both men and women were they cared about their appearance they cared there was a specific style for you know like the people who are in the the gangs yeah the, the like clicks the the idea of clicks probably solidified at this time period mm-hmm. right of like oh you don't go over there because that's the jets or like you know like you know the the greasers and in, in uh uh the <laughs> grease lightning over there like the whole breakdown of this like connection like the cheerleaders and the jocks that are all separate individuals um and very quote-unquote like stylistic of like the tropes yeah <clears throat> this that maybe and maybe that's where we have what we've had over the this the because of media depicting the the they look back at nostalgia and said this is how i remember it yeah 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 right i really would love to know what gen c thinks about this movie for reals i actually thought i was like man i wish i had like we should we should have like seen if we could get some other gens if if we have any gen c listeners like comment below let us know like we do want to know we want you to know because like it like we're two millennial dudes so like who are happily married who have really strong women as their wives yeah and so when we look at this we're like Cool. <laughs> cool. Um, I want to start off talking a little bit about that animated credits, bro. <laughs> I was like, "Are we watching First Bueller right now?" I just what? Well, first of all, Frankie Valley song Grease banger, oh, great stuff, so good. Why the animation? I don't know. Be- and like, it sets a tone it, that doesn't it doesn't correlate correlate to the rest of the movie. It almost feels like they like this, they they br- they brought in the best. Like, like motion title animator, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I'm not gonna do this in the f- style of the '50s, or I'm gonna do this in my style." Yeah, and that felt very modern. It it, it to me it almost it felt very like uh, Scooby Doo like uh, the original Scooby Doo. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, there but like there's a scene where like <laughs> they have Sandra D like getting ready. There's deer like in <laughs> like Bambi's in there. <laughs> there's like a rabbit like. <laughs> what is it? I'm just like, what is this? What is it happening? Is, it 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 kicked on and I literally thought like, could I? Am I watching the wrong movie? <laughs> <laughs> the first time I watched it, I'm like, I looked at my wife. I'm like, what? Why is there what? I'm like, what? <laughs> I was confused. Did your wife like this movie? Um. I think when we watched it that for that one time twelve years ago, she was like, "Oh wow!" And I, I, so I, I like to watch like everything with I, I watch everything with subtitles. 
And so she was like reading the like the lyrics and she's like, wait, what? Did it say that? And I'm like, yeah, it said that, <laughs> which I'm, I'm going to read some of the some of the lyrics. We might have to put like uh, uh, MA rating because <laughs> some of these lyrics we'll put explicit on this episode's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's uh, I think she I think her and I are on the same boat. Like we love the songs and, and we love I genuinely love john travolta in this he let's talk let's talk about the characters let's 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 talk about the characters and 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 talk because i i do think there's 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 some stuff to love i just think that at the end of the day when and i think maybe what people when we look at the hype of this movie people hype for travolta i i don't know man like i i think i've never seen a a high school grease production Oh, I'm I have. I've seen two. Okay, and I'm curious to like. Obviously, there's enough love that people continue to produce this in high schools. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not like the 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 like the the like nuance like the innuendos in this movie are like level fifteen. Okay, and in the plays, like there's a little bit of banter, but it's it feels way more like an actual like some th that there's a draw to the characters and Travolta and Danny's character is having a struggle okay. a little bit more okay do you do you think that's that's like do you think that's from like the original I don't know yeah I'm not I'm not a music I'm not over here like taking notes I'm not a musical major musical a music, theater, yeah, ma a theater th major I'm not a theater darn you a crew. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe 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 let me say this like as a Mexican immigrant yeah I some I, I think I when the first time I watched this I was just like this is a straight up like a white people movie like it is very it, much and 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 that's fine no, nothing, like no nothing no no offense no. for you guys no I I just culturally I get very different even though I grew up here in the states I just to me I was just like like this is just seems very like white people love this yeah and that's fine and that's great yeah. and my wife was even saying like yeah I think like this is. This is like the all American high school environment of the fifties. Yeah. And and to me I was like, okay, sure, that makes sense. Um, but I think I think that's why there's this love for it, because maybe grandpa lived there in that time and dad saw it in the seventies and I've been watching it ever since I was a little kid. There's people that watch this like at the age of like six and, and like it, it Greece has always existed. Like yeah. it's it's just like yeah. how Star Wars has always existed for me. Yeah like Greece has always existed for them. Yeah. And so I think I think there I do think there's a genuine like love for this. Yeah, no, there is. For sure. I think there was we'll talk we'll talk about better music. Let's let's uh talk about Danny Zuko. <clears throat> Danny Zuko's character, he he I mean John Travolta does a phenomenal job. He like like I actually really enjoy the moments when he's with Sandy and he's like trying to be his actual self. Ooh, oh, when? <laughs> That's true. When I guess okay, you're right. I don't know if it's his actual self. When he's trying to be he he's he's not putting on a facade for his guys, for the boys, and he's doing maybe a facade, maybe like a weird mixture of like he just actually likes this girl. He he can ha he thought he could have his guard down, and just enjoy some time. Uh, and now she's in the, the you know the school, and he's trying to like figure out what to do. Okay, because I I really liked Danny at the beach scene right at the beginning, right? Yeah, <laughs> and he's romantic with her, and yeah. he's he's charming, and and then like he is this the last time we'll see each other, Danny? And, and you know, and like, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm going to be going back. In, I'm going to be switching characters throughout this whole episode. Right. And he's like, oh, I don't remember what he says, but like, he's like, oh, maybe yeah. what, what, what's the line he says? He says something about, no, this, this is just the beginning. Oh yeah. This, this, is, just the beginning. this is just the beginning. Right. Um, I like him there, but when they first meet again, Oh no. At the pep rally, I, I kudos to John Travolta. Cause like he, he sees Sandy and he, he has this like just excitement in his a genuine? eyes. A genuine like, oh my gosh, I lost this girl. I was singing about her just literally like a couple days ago. 
I see her here, right? And he has this excitement, and then immediately goes, "Yeah, what up, baby?" Like, <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Why, like, why, the, whoa, you don't need to keep tabs on me. Yeah, like, like he, complete one eighty. Great, great acting, but what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like he, like this facade, because of that genuine initial like response, and I think that like you know that's why Sandy. Not saying that this is okay. That's why Sandy quote unquote, sticks around is because she sees through a level of the facade, but she's trying to figure out is it really? Yes, yes. Which is why I have the issue with with, with at the end. Like, why would you change for him? F- which, yeah, and the, it does beg the question: like, is it for him or is it just for the moment? Because like, there's the one scene at the end where she like is got the smoke. And this freaking smokes in this, <laughs> dude. This movie does not age well. I I also I'm, remember when I first watched it. I'm like, freaking boomers. They complain about us millennials as like the worst generation. No, look at you guys in the fifties. You were they smoking. <laughs> I really want to know. Were they like smoking in front of their freaking PE teachers? I mean, come on. That's what I want to know. Um. <laughs> but then like I, but no, I, sorry i was saying that she she has a smoke she flicks it down because like she looks like she's like not sure what to do oh yeah and, and, and then the girl's like frenchy tells yeah, her yeah, to like yeah, throw yeah. it right yeah um i will say though that i i really and this is where like i think the movie could have been could have been better we don't spend time with danny and and sandy At, we have that like, scene right then we see them later when they're um in the in the malt shop right in the diner and he tries to like ask her out and she says no then we see them again third time at the track right and there's a little bit of chemistry there's a little playfulness there we don't see them together again until they go on another date back to the diner but he's trying to be like quiet and sneaky about it we don't we're not giving time alone with them they're at the dance then there's the drive-in thing drive-in theater scene where he tries to make a move on her and she gets mad. Then he sings the song Sandra where he becomes the victim. Dude, F you, dude, man. Dude, <laughs> it's, gaslighting, look, look, bro. It's, but I was listening to the song today and I was dude. like, beautiful song, but in the wrong context. Like, you are not the victim here. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. don't say, oh, I, 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 Sandy. Like, and don't make this about, like, how you're the victim. No, you, sir, are have no concept of of consent here like <laughs> dude, dude, the, he's oh no the consent is with the ring bro the promise ring okay look she took the ring bro uh, and so uh, that's i i actually it's a, it's a beautiful song that's, if you music, take out the musically context. i don't know if is it a beautiful song if it's because the context is that that is the context okay if it's if, a if, be- if, if 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 yeah you're right i just it, the song is meant to be beautiful the song but, is meant to be beautiful. But the yes. problem is, is it at the end, at the core value of that song, is n- not is being rejected and saying, "Oh, this is you're breaking my heart." Right. And because you won't put out. Because you won't put out. Because I, you told me to stop, and I kept going. You told me to stop multiple times, and I still kept. Going. And I kept going. And then she had to walk away. And, and now you broke my heart. <laughs> You, Danny, like, <laughs> listen, Danny Zuko, bleep this. <laughs> you, Danny Zuko, like, ah, don't, don't even, man, Dude, don't play the victim I, here. I, <laughs> truly, this, the amount of like, Dude, the same thing with like boomer. How is the boomer generation like over here? Like these, like, mil, like millennials, millennials and Gen, and Gen Z's, Z. like, ruin them. I'm like, bro, is this really how the freaking fifties were? You just like. It started with you guys. <laughs> you, you set the tone, okay? You, you set the tone. <laughs> um, but 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 I, I I really wish we would have had more of time of them together, and and not but, musically, like but I, yeah. But I think I think this is where like I do truly think I'm trying to like really reach back in my memory of like seeing Greece as the production, mm-hmm. and I'm like I'm like. Like a lot of these little moments, I truly, in my mind, when I was watching it this round, I'm like, they took all these songs and they're like, how do we slap these these characters and um and put it into what, what kind of story could we put into and and like they literally wrote it to these to like dudes 
uh, and then they made the outfits for the girls, and they just slapped like the most. They're like everyone and their dog got. They're like, dude, what are the what are all the the you know what are all the jokes that we used to say or like <laughs> like or or like what what, are, what were the jokes that all our, our dads used? To? You're like, this is why it's a parody. It is a parody you of. Think it's a par- oh, hold on. I, I I think it's a parody of okay. of, of the fifties. Does that make it better? No. Does it make it worse? You know, you know how like, um, you know when you watch something on Disney Plus and it says like <laughs> the, the creators of this film. No, it's something along the lines of like um, some of the references here are are out of touch or yeah, yeah, well, yeah, miscultured, whatever, or something yeah. like that, right? Like it has it on ja- on Aladdin, yeah, um, <clears throat> and other stuff. Like I think this movie needs to have <laughs> uh, like a warning. <laughs> a, I think uh, in the front where it says this is. Out of touch <laughs> culturally, it like it's just. I think it needs to have a similar warning as all like the Disney Plus ones have. Look, you, you you're not wrong because look, let's say, look, Danny Zuko and Sandy Olsen, like the two characters overall. If if we had more time, if they and they wrote it less misogyn, like less uh, misogynistic, predatorial, predatorial. <laughs> um, I don't know what else we could put there. Uh, like, well, I don't know, what, all sorts of stuff. I, uh, I I was reading that the director did a scene the right before the the time right before they go into the diner and they're on a date. Allegedly, <clears throat> um, he did a scene, and one of the cast, I think Frenchie, said the scene was so good, it was something that like Martin Scorsese would direct, but it felt so out of tone, like it, it was just so dramatic so intimate so personal it felt way out of out so of, they cut it so they cut it okay. and she says quote something as like something that you would see in a martin scorsese film okay all right <laughs> <laughs> okay put your foot down marcel put your foot down uh dude l- l- okay with that look i think is this movie really about danny and sandy they like to tell us that it is okay yeah, I don't know who this movie's about. Okay, honestly, because we got Betty Rizzo over here doing and Frenchie, both these two girls. Who knows what hardships they're going through? Because Betty is throwing herself to every freaking dude left and right, like it's no care in the world. I mean, she has that one song, right? There, there's far worse things that you could do that you could do than be sleeping around. Sure, yes, sure, yeah. But then you get pregnant, or you have a pregnancy scare. I will say, like that that song that she has, right? Yeah, it's and and, and this is where I, I'm also like, I I wanted to see more of that uh, vulnerability throughout yes. the movie. I'm gonna say this: the the pink pink ladies. Yeah, is that their names? I think so. Pinkies or something like that. I don't know. Pink jackets, pink ladies, pink something. Grease. Someone's yelling at us right now. Pink ladies. Pink ladies. Forget them. What's the point of the pink ladies? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. And Rizzo, Rizzo's not a good friend. Rizzo is not a good friend. I, I don't know why I would want to hang out with Rizzo. And I'm also like, I'm thinking of even like high school movies like Mean Girls. Okay? Yeah. You have the plastics, right? Again. O- also, you... Clicks. Uh, what is with this, with high school? Like, I mean, did, did Greece solidify the idea of clicks? Maybe for modern, like society. Maybe that's all I'm saying. I'm throwing that out there. Just saying. Um, going back to like Mean Girls, though, like you have you have the plastics and you have Regina George, right? Who also is a bit of a jerk. Oh, not a bit of a jerk. She, she is, is a, a jerk, jerk, right? But there is, it, like, she has her her moment of of being. Sh- not shamed, humbled, right? There's growth to that character by the end of the movie, and we see her become vulnerable. <clears throat> we don't see that here with the pink ladies. I also think that, like, from the get-go, it... <sighs> let, me, let me ask this. Do you think that if this movie had been set in college, that it would have, la- that it would have landed, like, slightly better? Um... I don't, I don't, maybe, no, let me tell you, and I, I texted this to you, you know what's a 
you know what's a better musical than this? Tell me. And and definitely, I think heavily influenced, and it is. It's been right. They've said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. High School Musical, with Zac Efron and um. I can't remember her name. Who was the girl in that movie? Vanessa Hudgens, right? Vanessa Hudgens. It's. A, I mean, it's it, it it's basically Greece, modern retelling of Greece, but it's a heck of a lot better. I have not seen High School Musical. What? In, no, no, no. In years. Oh, okay, okay. I've seen it. <laughs> okay, I was going to be like, I was gonna it. Be like, who are you? Dude, that was the that was literally like there was the whole. But here's the thing though, It's like as as like the like one, it was filmed in here in Utah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, East High. Yeah. Uh, in Salt Lake. And so I had friends that were on the cast, like okay. as the extras in there. So there was a little bit of like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, if you're listening, if you know who you are, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> but you know it. who you are. <laughs> but two, uh, it it did not get a lot. Like I remember it getting some hate when I was in high school. Like in, when when it first came out from my gender, from some like the individuals that I that I hung around. It was a mixed bag. Some people really loved it. Some people like like made fun of it every single day. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. It it. it Greece was loved by everyone immediately, right? right? It was the songs were in the top charts right. for weeks, right? Whereas High School Musical, I think it, I think also it's just our our millennial generation, be, right? I, I agree, and that's why I'm like, I feel like I really after you said this to me, I'm like, I really need to go watch this again. I was one of those people who loved it, but I was like a a closeted that's lover of it. <laughs> like I loved it, and I didn't tell people about it <laughs> until like. Like a year until, later, until people, pe- people were like starting to talk more about. It. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. High School Musical, it's good, right? Like, right? <laughs> I always liked it. Well, let me jump in this bandwagon. Dude, I freaking, <laughs> I freaking, I can totally see you doing this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like High School Musical is a lot better in in those dynamics of like high school uh, love, love. Like, right? I'll, he he comes back and he's a yes. cool kid, and he he also plays like the whole like. Oh, you're here. We weren't supposed to see each other ever again, right. and like, you know, and and there's more moments of vulnerability and intimacy where they, where Vanessa and Zac Efron really talk to each other and say like, "Here's why I like you, but here's also why I don't like you. Why you're being a dick." Yeah. Right. And at that point, Zac Efron. His character grows and matures, and he has a great musical number to show that growth as well, right? We don't get that from from Greece, and that's why, like, I'm I'm staking my reputation on this. Look at me in the camera if you're not watching, if you're listening, unfortunately. But like, High School Musical is a million times better than Greece, and will always be better than Greece. There, take that, America. <laughs> take that, boomers. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, listen. Um, I need to rewatch High School Musical, but I'm I'm like I'm gonna back you up on that, just for the fact that like I literally watched this movie and I almost had to take a shower <laughs> before coming here because I was like, what was that? We've said this before, and we say it again. Like, listen, if you're gonna give us something, you need to. We need to have someone needs to have a sense of vulnerability. Someone needs to feel. Someone needs to be defeated. Someone needs to be brought down. Have to reset themselves. In order for us to find, um, a, my band teacher would always say, like, we need to, ha- we need to, ha- we need to bring things up so we can build it back up. We've said this before. Yeah. <clears throat> this movie, again, I think some of the, like, a lot of the, you know, one Betty Rizzo, not a good friend, Frenchie, like, it, and um, is trying to be a good friend. Yeah. But she's also, for whatever reason dealing with like again we could there's so many different characters each one of these characters could have had a moment even if even if for like one or like four lines you don't you don't think beauty school dropout is enough for for frenchie no <laughs> the beauty school dropout though i love dude, it dude that line was so ridiculous this, this time was like i love it she's like talking to the server who's like you know she's she's in her like 60s and she's talking about i just i, I just dropped out of you know i dropped out of beauty school what do you think about a, a a servant she's like you're too young to know to know what this is right uh which just is a whole nother line that depicted this movie feels so out of touch and i don't again i don't I'm not sure if it's because these are like 
older characters playing high school kids. And, yeah, and maybe that's part of like the satire and the parody of it all. Maybe. I'm I'm <clears throat> I'm I'm, gi- I'm trying to I'm trying to give points to this movie, man. <laughs> yeah. Um this this but, is but you're right though. Like there are characters here that are having some major like they're seniors, right? Major life um uh, altering moments but we're not given a, a moment to like to bring it down and build it up and i think again like i'm gonna go back like every time as i'm trying to like really think back because i've seen i've seen two instances one of them was my actual high school and one of them when it was when i was uh supporting i was actually doing an internship and i had to go take some some stills for uh, a school district that i was working for mm-hmm. <clears throat> and in both situations i remember having more moments of like like greater like feeling and impact right and again i think may it could be that like when they're in a play one they have to write it for for high schools yeah right so it's from the broadway it's been select it's been you know given what what high schoolers should be you know what they can do and like you can only do so much in a production, right? So you have to you, you go you're going for for a high, for a high school musical situation. You're looking at bigger musical pieces, uh, which are the key moments for this for the thing. So you ha- all you have to do is add enough moments for it to, them to go. Which is why, like, that's probably why I have a greater appreciation for Greece mm-hmm. than you did because I did have some of those in- in connections yeah, yeah. in those moments. And coming back and rewatching it. Especially as an adult of two daughters, <laughs> the, you look at this and, and all I can think about is like, what is this? What is, what what is happening? And I don't know if I can like. And even if even if they look at this a parody, I don't know if it, if I would even allow it to be called a parody <laughs> because it's it's like they're not going. It's almost like they they decided to go so far in one direction at the time period that they failed to give it its proper dues for the other direction. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they're like, no, if this, if we just do this, we hit all the songs, we do an, a cool musical, we do cool musical numbers, numbers for all of them that it's going to be timeless. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yes. And and here's where like the argument is like the the music is timeless. If look if if I just listen to the songs on their own, okay, which okay. which I was doing today, yeah, and heck yeah, like they're bangers. Like I was yeah. like yeah, I'm singing along. I'm I'm singing both Danny Sukos and Sandy <laughs> Sandy's parts. Yeah, I'm hitting those high notes. Okay, in the car, <laughs> I am. But like in the context of the of the- the of, of the movie or of the play, I'm just like this is. That's why the yeah, this is not okay, right? No, but like anyway, um, I I I do want to say like, I know I know we're dogging like trashing this movie a lot, but like, if you like this and there's like a nostalgia to it and a love for it, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's great. And like you mentioned, like you see an appreciation for it because of the exposure. And that you, that you had to it, right? right? I think for me, and this is my conversation. I saw this for the first time as a as an adult, as a young adult, and I was like taken aback by like, what have I been singing and karaokeing with other with like yeah. my friends at, 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 at these karaoke nights, right? And I didn't know like the full context of this whole thing, right? right? And I think that comes down to like, it's ignorance is bliss. <laughs> ignorance is bliss. Okay. I mean, there's so many times when you're singing songs and as an adult that you sing in high school that you're like, is that really what it says? Did I just sing that right now? That, that's how but, I felt this time with Grease Lightning. Yeah. So Grease Lightning, we played in our jazz band. Yeah. Okay? And 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 that was like, I was like, I loved it. Yeah. Uh, it was a great song. We played it in our jazz band. Um, and this last time I was watching, again, the lyrics were coming up. And <laughs> the line, you know what line, right? <laughs> Give it to me. Grease lightning, the girls will get will cream right. Like yeah, I was just like what the what? 
<laughs> Yo, the, the... And then I remember to this one kid in the jazz band, okay, who I think he was he was a trombone player or a trumpet player. I can't remember. I think it was a trombone player. He's like, of course he was a trombone player. He, I remember, I remember when, when our teacher handed us the sheet, the music sheet, and the kid was like, you know, my dad says this movie's about sex. <laughs> What did the band teacher say? Uh, he, he, he's just a old guy. He's like, he's like, yeah, it's a great song. Like, Don't just worry. move on. Don't worry about it. And I was like, what is this? What? That's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, you're like, what? I need to watch the movie now. <laughs> what is this movie? <laughs> um, ah, uh, dude, no, the the one liners in this movie wild. Why don't you go, go go eat a weenie? And he's like, with relish, <laughs> with <the> relish. <laughs> Uh, or there was another, there was another, uh, innuendo for, uh, that was, oh man, there's so many, just, if we had a list, I should probably pull it. We should have probably shot it. I should have written down. So we just had like the, all the different terms. Maybe we'll, I'll, one day I'll come up with some ridiculous. My, my favorite line though, is when they're at the diner the first time and he's like sneaking to go talk to Sandy, <clears throat> Sandy. And she says something along the lines of like, Danny, are you just jealous? Oh, yeah. And and John Travolta's delivery of jealous? Come on, Sandy, don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. It's a classic it's line. Great. I love uh, John Travolta there. Okay, I want to talk about like favorite moments here. Yeah, let's talk about favorite let's moments. Let's talk about let's, moments. Let's wrap it. Wrap it with some favorite moments. Um fa- a favorite moment, favorite musical sequence, favorite song. Uh um, can be all the same. Three different ones. I love I love Summer Lovin'. Okay. And yeah, no, I love so I love Summer Lovin'. I just think it's a it's a great it, I love the duality. Like I just love that they're they're both sharing their story and it's told so differently. Uh I love that like in I love that in the in the you know, like it fully depicts what this movie the like with the boys and with the girls, the ridiculousness of that yeah, and why yeah. How at the end of the day, like, how can you know the truth? <laughs> how can you know the truth? Uh, and especially in high school, like, people, you know, the exaggeration, you know, like, you might have kissed a girl in the cheek, but you, you're like, we made out for 10 minutes. Not that I ever did that. <laughs> Danny. I made out. Yeah, no, no. But I did never tell. <laughs> I was not one to kiss and tell, my friend. Um, I I do love summer nights. I think it's because of the duality of it all, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I I think the director went on to say that he was really inspired by um, West Side Story. I was gonna say I, that to me, I think that's probably like it. You feel that strongly. Yeah. And it feels it feels um, Broadway. It feels like. The, the what they did with it, they felt like they added br- the Broadway flavor in a motion picture, whereas some of the other ones like Grease Lightning, um, Frenchie's Peace, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> uh, I do love Summer's or uh, Beauty School Dropout. Bro- I do love it. I can- I love that her garden angel is just trashing her. And just I know, belly. just just like getting re- and then like. The set piece. <laughs> She's like just like her own character. <laughs> There's the line. Well, uh, he, he says, "Well, they couldn't teach you anything. You think you're such a looker, but no customer would go to you unless she was a hooker." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boom. Roasted. I love it. Like, and I love the you know she wants Maybe this. This is a parody. She and wants I a, just... a, a fairy godmother, right? Yeah. Like, come and wave, and like here comes. Her her guardian angel and just roasts Rips her. Her roasts her and just tells her, "Look, get your act together." And she still doesn't get her act together. No, she goes back to school. Uh, did, did anyone graduate, dude? I don't know. Also, how does this movie? How is this? How is this a whole school year? But like, it it feels like this was this took place over like three four, weeks, yeah, oh, four days. <laughs> My other question is like he. I love that he like go like Travolta's character goes through. I think my favorite moment is the him trying to figure out how to do sports. <laughs> the sports sequence. The sports <laughs> sequence. Is that even called? This? I mean, like, it, I can't. It's not even a montage. It's literally just like him showing up to a couple. It's like you've never played basketball before. Like, I understand the fifties. Like a lot of sports, like football and football, hadn't even been invented. Yeah, yeah, I had. Had we gone to high schools yet? No, because they had gym. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dude, the, the, oh, the, that's what the pep yeah, rally that's was right, for. That's right. That's right. That's what was. Which was that a pep rally? Also, they were losing. I've been to. I was at a school that yeah, didn't they had win. a seven-year drought. The coach said a seven-year drought, and like the entire team was there giving it. Like it was like they were like the biggest winners. Yeah. Complete lies. <laughs> Complete I know lies. for a fact. <laughs> I know for a fact because I had a high school that did not have a win for a long time, and when we had, there was no pep rallies. Because they know no one would show up. No one would show up. The co- the te- the principal or the coach says, uh, "We'll get to ring the victory bell like we always wanted to." <laughs> I will say the most relatable character in this movie is the it's, principal for dude, me. Yeah, uh, like the principal is funny. She's great. Her uh, she she was she's awesome in this movie. Um, yeah, I think my favorite like movie scene is probably the sports scene. the sports scene. Yeah, it's just. But my thing is like he. he 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 letters in track. He letters in track. We see none of it. None of it. None of it. Like, are you kidding me? Lies. Um, show me the transcripts. Show me the transcript. Show me them making it across the finish line. Uh, I do like Summer Nights. Summer Nights is great. I think it's also the best choreographed. Yes. Of all of them, except okay. for except for the like the high school gym dance. Yeah, I'm a sucker for like a good high school gym dance. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I I think this. I I would have to rewatch it. I was I was distracted at that time when uh-huh. I was watching that scene, so I don't know if I have I can say a lot. I just watching it this time with the amount of attention that I could give it. It there was a lot of moments that I was like, they it lost me. That like one. The high school girl talking to like the news anchor or this, oh the the, the celebrity. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, uh, the uh, I I felt so icky during that whole. I, I, I was like, that was this... the one that I was like, do I need to take a shower right now? Vince Fontaine literally hitting on on high schoolers in front of everybody. everybody. He wasn't even hiding it, dude. No, he wasn't, dude. They ended up like I'm sure he went home, <laughs> and I'm like. Unless this is how the 50s was. like I don't know. Mad Men tells us another story, right? <laughs> Great series. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I really like Summer Nights. I think it's the best choreographed. I, I love the duality of it all. Um, I want to just maybe let's finish with this. Let's finish with You're the One That I Want. I, I will say there is something There's something about Olivia and you and John coming in in the black high-waisted leggings <laughs> pants. <laughs> Like she looks great. Okay. She looks phenomenal. Awesome. I don't like her perm. It could have been. You could argue that it was a a, a wig that Frenchie maybe gave her because Frenchie loved wearing wigs. Yeah. Not a fan of it. Uh, the choreography not my favorite. So par. I, I I was reading about it. They they filmed that like they they had no choreography, so they were just making it up. Um, on on the day. This sounds like about right. Which is why Summer Nights, I think, it's the be- is the best choreographed, especially like on the bleachers, the dancing on yeah, the bleachers, yeah, yeah. and and John Travolta hitting it. Um, <clears throat> do 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 they live happily ever after? Dude, absolutely not, <laughs> bro. Literally ten minutes later, uh, why does she change for him? Look, if Danny liked her for who she was in the summer, right? He did like her, dude. She's from Australia. This is this is this is what I have. To Are we gonna about. stereotype Australians now? As... I don't think that. No, I don't want. No, but this Australian apparently saw one ridiculous drag race. Oh, the drag race, dude. Let's talk about the. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the most boring sequence in cinema. <laughs> They're hitting maybe thirty-five miles an hour. <laughs> like, could you not have? Edited, edited that to make it seem faster, more engaging. This is 1978. We, we've already had, what, the Italian job by now? The original Italian job. We've had... Um, uh, bro, budget, bro. It comes, was, out, it comes out into one word. Budget. They go down. They turn around. They have spikes. Uh, some, they spent all their budget on spikes. Uh, at some point, Danny, for whatever reason, thinks it, it would make sense. It would be beneficial for him to go <laughs> up the the side of the LA River. No, 
Okay, <laughs> physics tells you that that's not efficient. <laughs> Did, were these kids not taught taught physics in high school? Bro, like, why does they what were you smoking up? and then laugh? Like, they didn't go to high school. It was it's such a boring How, sequence, dude. It's so bad. I mean, e- even but, but dude, why did they even race in the first place? Okay, because the scorpions are. Is it the scorpions? The, yeah, they the have beef with them. But but we never really get any real beef with the scorpions, other than they have a nicer car than him. Yeah, well, and uh, and he run he rhymes into, uh, in with uh with Rizzo and yeah he takes and, Rizzo and, out and cha 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 cha. Freaking Cha Cha, dude! Freaking forty-five year old Cha Cha <laughs> pretending to be a seventeen-year-old. <laughs> dude, gross! All I'm saying, like this last time, I was like, this this r- racing sequence does not hit. Like this, but that's I think that's the reason why she like dresses for him. Why? And, and that, because- I wrote that in my notes. Like, why does she at the end of racing sequence want to change for him? He because, likes her. He's looking for dude, her. I know why. Why? Because it's the fifties. <laughs> I just and they have some weird shit going on. I just don't get it. I just, just dude. I don't. Dude, I, listen, watching it this time, I think I was just like I didn't care about what else was happening. I was like, oh, music's great. Music's great. <laughs> music like the, I think they were like it's almost like they threw music and people like it was. It was good enough, and John Travolta and Olivia Newton John and you know some of the characters were good looking enough were good looking enough that like it like played this magical like thing in your face that you kind of didn't you look past some of the, the stuff and then you come back without your goggles after years of growth and <clears throat> and real cinema and you go back to watch this film and you're like what is what, what is this what is this atrocity. <laughs> Look, all I, it's all not I, that bad. No, okay. no, it's not. It's not. It's We're, not. We, we we have this podcast because we don't ever had. We didn't have people. You didn't have people to really talk to about yeah, this stuff. Yeah, I had things in my head, but I just was like, I'm just gonna like. I can't. I can't sit down and talk about it too much because then I get, then I get like passionate about things, <laughs> and then I like become cynical about movies, and I didn't want to do that. But this is one of those movies where you have to look at it and you have to say. You have to like give it the benefit of the doubt, put it in its context of when it was released, and let some of the ridic no quite a bit of the rid- the ridiculous things that happened in this movie slide. Otherwise, you'll never enjoy the bangers that are the musical tracks that are in this in this this movie. Or you can just put on the soundtrack. Or you just put on the soundtrack and, and you let it be, and and create a whole new story in your head. That which is a better version that supports the the songs. Look, all I'm going to say is. <clears throat> Let's do a quick duet here to uh, You're the One That I Want. Oh, my gosh. There's a scene. There's there's a line that really upsets <clears throat> me now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Sandra D says, you better shape up because I need a man. Do, do, do. And my heart is set on you. And my heart is set on you. You better shape up. Do, do, do. You better understand. Do, do, do. To my heart, I must be true. B.S. <laughs> Don't give me that, Sandra D. To yeah, my Sandra. heart, I must be true. No, you just literally changed yourself. Now, you can argue this this sexy uh, Sandra D is who she was all along. Okay, then give me <laughs> context as to why she that was her all along. Exactly. Because I don't get that in, in the last hour and 45 Listen, minutes. If she had outthrown Rizzo and showed all her other friends... That she wasn't as good of a friend as she has, and she shows in, shows up slowly but surely, whip it out being the the new leader, the, of the, the new pink, set, yeah, the new leader, of the pink ladies. As that scene, dude, that movie would have been so much better. Okay, then then that line to my heart, I must be true. Sure, nothing left, nothing left for me to do. No, Sandra D. There's so much for you, left for you to do. You literally just graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> The world's your oyster. Uh, I hope we don't have to pay royalties for singing that there on our podcast. <laughs> Definitely. That would suck. <laughs> okay, well, um listen, this was a this was a pleasant surprise. Look, look, I I I my final thoughts. I understand why people love this. I I, I do. I think there there is a, a generational love to it yes. and nostalgia to it. 
music. This, this movie, and we didn't talk about this. 1978, Saturday Night Live came out in the spring. Four months later, Grease comes out. This catapults John Travolta to become the star, to become now a, 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 a movie star. He was yes. doing TV. I can't remember the name of the show that he was on. Where for the, like the later season, he no longer like he made just a guest experience, a guest appearance because he was in such demand. Yeah. This, th- I mean, Greece would not be Greece without John Travolta. We also wouldn't have the like high school trope movies that we would have without Greece. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I would say that. Right, like we, I Mean, mean yeah, Girl. Yeah. Like we talked about Mean Girls. We talked about High School Musical. A lot of these, like the like, not you know, have are built on some of the same principles yeah. of parody, which I didn't even think about. But because I just, I just thought of it as a musical. But I, it's a musical parody. Yeah, that's what I gotta look at it. All my my takeaways is I want a uh, uh, Gen Z to tell me their thoughts on yeah, this. Yeah, we need, we and need I to want know. like someone who we, who was maybe in their twenties. And saw this in theaters. Dude, that'd be awesome to find out. We should probably post a TikTok because I think that's the only place we'll be able to get that's info. True. <laughs> Anyways, um, we hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'd love it if you could subscribe on whatever you get, the platform you get your podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave us a review. It does help us get discovered. More importantly, what did you think of Grease? What, what are your favorite moments? What's your favorite musical or musical sequence of it? We want to hear from you. Uh, you can always reach out to us uh, on all the socials at Real Chumps, or you can email us at your at realchumps.com. You can find me on Twitter at Marstrosity, M-A-R-Z-T-R-O-S-I-T-Y. Or me at Rubio underscore TV. Join us next week as we kick off our month-long review of rom romance m- movies uh, with the rom-com The Ugly Truth. I haven't seen this one. It's great. I'm excited to talk about it. Okay. We'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.